Huge time lapses are really satisfying to watch, but sometimes hard to create. This world editor, for example, took multiple days to run, but has been edited into one single clip. So today I want to show you how you can make time lapses of large scale builds or machines, and also how to make those enjoyable to watch. I will first show you a quick overview of how to use a replay mode, then I will give you some tips to record and edit any type of time lapses. And lastly, I will show you how I make large scale time lapses using some mods like PCRC and Bobby, and also how to assemble replay files together. Okay, so in this video I won't explain how to install the replay mod, but I will link a video in the description that explains everything. But I will just highly recommend using Sodium instead of Optifine, you can show the compatible versions if you click here. And basically the replay mod allows you to record everything you are doing in-game. So at the top here you have the timeline of what you recorded, here this is 30 minutes, and here this is the timeline of the edited part. So let's say I want to make a 10 second time lapse with this. I can just go in the beginning and add the time keyframe and the position keyframe. Then I can go around the middle and I can move the camera and place another position keyframe around 5 seconds. Then I can go to the end. I can move the camera again and place another keyframe around 10 seconds. And now if I move this to the beginning, I can read the replay and if you want to export it you can just click here and click render and after the rendering is finished this is the end result now what can you do in game to make sure all your time lapses look good well first if you are building something long like this road you need to make sure that the entire road fits in the render distance otherwise if you are on one side of it the other side won't be loaded and if you're on single player, you can just increase your render distance to something like 20 or 24. And also, if for example, you need to go back to your storage because you forgot some materials, make sure you first pause the recording. Then you can go anywhere you want, grab your stuff, and when you're back, you resume the recording. Those are just simple things, but still a lot of people forget to do it. Okay, for the next part I will talk about shader settings. And there are different things that you need to consider when using shaders in time lapses. For example, this room is really dark and it may look great in game, but for the time lapse, it may be hard to see sometimes. So I will recommend going into the shader settings. I'm using complementary shaders because you have a lot of settings. In lightning, you can go to minimum light. You can test, for example, 512 and now it's a lot easier to see so I will recommend having these settings a lot higher in caves than outside because for example now if we go into this room this is way too bright so now we need to have this a bit lower and now this looks a lot better and if you are in the nether I would also recommend turning down the lava brightness you can just go into materials, immersive settings. It doesn't look as good, but it's a bit better for the eyes. And there are a lot more shader settings that you can change, but those are the most important ones. I would also recommend to not have a field of view too large. I usually play on 80, but go down to 70 to export the replays. If you have Tweakeru, I would also recommend disabling the rain. You can go in Yitz and just search for rain. And maybe also disable the beacon. But now what if you want to record time lapses of really large areas? Or what if you want to record time lapses over multiple weeks? Well for that you will have to use another mod, which is called PCRC. PCRC is a program that allows you to record time lapses using another account that is put in Spectator and that doesn't move, which makes the replay files a lot smaller and a lot easier to edit. And if you have the program running server side, you can make time lapses 24 7 without having to let your computer running. Now I will provide a quick tutorial on how to install and use this program. So on the website you have some explanation on how it works some configuration that you can change and to download it you need to go in release 
and download the latest one. Then you need to open the program once. And now you have a config file that you can open. And here you need to change a few things. If you are on a single player, you will have to open your world to LAN. And you will also have to change the port to the correct one. You can leave the rest as it is. But if you are on a server, I think you need to have a real account to use this. So you will need to change offline to Microsoft. Then in username, you need to enter your email address and then your password. You will also need to change localhost to the IP of your server and make sure you have the correct port. Then underneath you can change the maximum size of the replay file and also the maximum length. I usually have that to 12 hours but I change that to for example 6000. You can change this to however you want but I will not recommend to have it too high. Then under features, you have different things that you can change. First, this is the daytime. So the PCRC program doesn't record the daylight cycle. So you need to select a time before recording. But there is an easier way to do it. So I will not bother about that now. Then you can also disable the weather, which I will recommend to do. Then there is an option to record only when the player is near the recording bot. So you can let this to true if you use this program to record building for example and every time you go away to get some materials it will stop recording but if you use it to run a machine you need to change this to false otherwise it will stop recording every time you're leaving the server then you can choose if you want to remove the items the bats and the phantoms and i will set everything to true because for large scale time lapses you don't need those once this is done you can save the file and close it. And now you can run the program. And now you need to copy this link. You can now it should ask you to connect to your Microsoft accounts. And once this is done, it will lead you to this blank page. But I'm already connected, so I'm directly in this page. Then you can copy this link and paste it on the program. You can press enter. So if I type start, it will log on the player onto the server and start recording the time lapse. Then you will need to put the player in spectator and move it to the correct spot. I will show you an example of how to do it in game. For this example I decided to build a wall editor, which means I had to spend the last three days making the trenches for this perimeter. Here the only way to load the entire machine will be to stand in the middle with a render distance of 16. Here I can see both ends of the machine, so I can place the bot to record the time lapse. So I will spawn my second account here. And now I just need to type start on the PCRC program and this will start the time lapse. And I will also start the time lapse here to show you the comparison between the two. Okay, so I finished building the first side of the wall editor, and here we have the two time lapses. This is the one using the PCRC program, and this is the one without the program. And the first thing we can check is the size of the two files. And as you can see here, the time lapse using the PCRC program is a lot smaller in size than the one without the program. It's actually 15 times smaller. So that's already one of the huge benefits of using this program. Now I will first try to make a time lapse using this replay. Okay, I finished the time lapse. Now I will export it and we will see how it looks. This is the replay we got and as you can see this is really not usable because the player is moving too much, so there is too much chunk unloading and reloading. And also it switches really fast between the day and the night, which makes it not enjoyable to watch. And now let's try to do the same thing with the one recorded with the PCRC program.
Okay, now let's export this one and compare the two. In this new replay, two things got fixed. First, all the chunks are loaded, and also the daylight cycle is turned off. I want to add that even without the PCRC program, it's possible to disable the daylight cycle in game or for your time lapses. For that, you need to have a mod like Twig Fork, and there is an option which is called Daylight Cycle Override. You can then change the time of the day in generic and change it to whatever you want. You can also disable the weather, which is something I will recommend for long time lapses. You also have those options in Twicker More. So you can use either of those mods to do those things. One last thing we can do to improve the time lapse is to install Bobby. Bobby is a mod that allows you to have bigger render distances than the server. So we can go into the settings and enable it. And now we should be able to have a much bigger render distance. So let's say for example 50. Now to load all those chunks, the game need to have them in memory. So for that there is two options. You need either to explore your world with the mod installed, so it can save all the chunks, or you need to transfer a copy of your world in the saves folder. And you also need to rename this world Bobby Fallback. Now let's export the replay and see how it looks. And now as you can see, this is much better than the first one. Ok, so now I will show you how you can assemble multiple replays together. So for example here I want to assemble those three replays to make just one clip. So I will start with the first one. So the first replay you can edit it normally. Here I will just make something really simple. Now that this is done you can go into your replay folder. And here you will find all your replay files. And I will highly recommend renaming your files so it's easier to find them. So here I edited this one and I can open it, for example using WinRAR. And I have different files, but the most important one is this one, the timelines file. And this is the file where you have all your positions and time keyframe. And for example if I open this one, I don't have the timeline file because I have not edited this one. So now what you need to do is to change the extension of the file that you have not edited yet. So this one. And you need to change it to a zip file. So now if we open this again, we can just move the timeline file into the new one. And once this is done, you just need to change back the extension. So now when we go back in replay mode and open this file, we will have the same position and time keyframe as the previous file. So now what you can do is to delete the first one, and you take the last one and you put it in the beginning. Which means that now this replay will start exactly where the last one ended. So this is where the replay starts. And now I will place another position keyframe around here. And maybe another one here. And I can change the time by double clicking here. So I will export those two files and now we will see how it looks in the editing software. So now I have the two replays. And we can read it to see how it looks. So as you can see it's already nice, but we can still improve it a bit. So the first thing is here. 
I unloaded the region without pausing the replay, so I have a few frames without anything. We can fix this by just removing this part. And then we have one frame in the beginning of this replay that we need to remove. And now if we read this again, it looks like one replay. But actually here we can see that there is a cut because I forgot to pause the replay. But here this is really clean. We can see that this is two different files. And I even added the last file. We can see how it looks now. And as you can see, you can't really tell the transition. I also want to give you a quick advice if you have a lot of different replay files. For example, for the bedrock breaking, I had around 50 files and each one of those was rendered into a one second replay. So you need to keep the camera movement really simple, otherwise you will end up with something that looks like this. And this is not really nice to look at. So I will show you how I do in this case. So I already have the keyframes of the previous replay. And the first thing I want to do is to change this to one minute. This way it will be really easy to read. So as you can see this is really short. And here what I want to do is just to move left without touching anything else. Now I can delete the first keys. Move this here. And then place the new one. So it's just a simple camera movement. And since I will have 20 of those, in the end it will make something a lot more interesting and also a lot more enjoyable to watch. And once this is done, you can check the length of the replay and change the time keyframe. And you can just close it. This way you don't have to move to the entire timeline, which sometimes can take a few minutes to load. And it saves a lot of time. But for each one of those replays, I still have to wait around 2 minutes when I close this, because it needs time to save it. This is now the end of the video and I hope you learned some useful things and I will see you in the next one. See you!